Hi there, and welcome back. Till now, we have learned uh, basics of uh, data structures and algorithms, which includes definition of data structure and algorithms. We also learned time and uh, space complexity of algorithms, and in the last section, we have learned details of recursion. Now, from this section, we will start to learn data structures one by one and do practice using Python programming language. In this video, we will start to learn array data structure. It is the most used data structure. An array is a simple collection of objects or things. They are very powerful data structures that store list of elements and they have endless application. And they have endless applications. Simple examples can be collection of books on our table, clothes in our wardrobe, and pens in our pen stand. Let's quickly examine one of these real-life array structures uh, to understand uh, the logic behind the array. So here, we will look at this box of macarons. This box of macarons is very similar to array data structure. If we look at this box very carefully, we can easily see what properties of this box of macarons. Okay, first is, it's a box of macarons which holds only macarons. This means that this box is produced for macarons. You cannot store, for example, cream puff in this box because it will not fit in. This box is produced for only for storing macarons. The next property is that all macros in this box are next to each other. There is no gap between them, which means that they are contiguous. The next property is each macaron over here can be identified uniquely based on their location. So let's say if we want to take this macaron over here, the location of this macaron is 1, 2, 3. So this is unique location for this. Then if you want to take this macaron from here, the location of this macaron will be 4. As you see, each of these macarons has its own location, which is unique. So the last property is that we cannot change the size of this box, which is fixed. This means that this box is produced by some standard manufacturer and assume that there will be only 10 macarons. We cannot change the size of this box or we cannot put 11 macarons inside this box. It is produced by standard manufacturer to hold only 10 macarons. So these are the common properties of this box and we can easily see them if you look at carefully. So if we compare this box of macarons with the array structure, we see that they are very similar. So a typical array structure looks like this. Here we have six elements. Here you can easily see that the appearance of macaron box and array structure somehow looks like each other. Now let's look at the properties of this array and we will see that they are similar to the properties of this box over here. So the first property is that Array can store data of specified type. This means that when we create an array of integers, we cannot store string values in this array. So if we try to insert this value to this array, it will raise error. We cannot do that. So as you see, this property is kind of similar to this property, the first property of this book. Here, we can think that data type is macaron, so we cannot store this uh, cream puff into this data because this is for macaron. So in array, the data type is integer. So if we want to store string value over here, it will raise an error and will not allow us to do so because this is how arrays work. Once you have defined the type of data for array, the elements must be the same type of the data that we defined. Okay, let's continue to the next property. The next property is elements of array are located in contiguous location in memory. This means that elements of array are next to each other. 
So there is no gap between them as we have in the Macron's both. As you see, we don't have any gap here and we don't have any gap between these elements. They are located next to each other. So the next property is each element of array has a unique index. As we have here, we have unique locations for these macarons and we have unique indexes for each element of array. So if you want to access, for example, this element over here, we need to access through index of two. And here take into account that indexes start from zero, not from one. And they are increases sequentially. So the last property is the size of array is predefined and cannot be modified. So here again, if you look at this box of macarons, we see that the size of this box is predefined. And this is applicable for array as well. When we create an array, we define its capacity. So we cannot change it later on. This is the biggest limitation on array. So this is all properties of array. As you, as you see that it is somehow similar to, to the properties of this box over here. Hopefully you now have a picture of array, what it looks like. Now let's see what is the definition of an array in computer science. In computer science, an array is a data structure consists of a collection of elements, each identified by at least one array index or key. An array is stored such that the position of each element can be computed from its index by a mathematical formula. So here we have a collection of integers and each of them identified by array index. So based on these indexes, we can find any element and do any mathematical calculations on them. Now you might be interested, why do we need an array? So in software programs, the array is used almost everywhere in the program to store any data. Consider a situation where we need to store three integer numbers. If we use programming simple variable and data concept, we need three variables of integer and we can store our numbers in these variables. So we don't have any problem. It's very simple. Because we had to store just three integer numbers, so we don't have any problem. We can create three variables and store our three integers inside these variables. Here is okay. Now let's assume we have to store 500 integer numbers. Are we going to declare 500 variables? Of course not. So to handle such situation, almost all programming languages provide a concept called array. An array is a data structure which can store a fixed size collection of elements of the same data type. So instead of declaring 500 variables, we just need to declare an array with a type of integer, keep these variables inside array. Then later on, by using indexes of array, we can access these variables easily. And that's it. Hopefully, with this lecture, you have understood what's an array and why it's essential in programming. Now, in the next lecture, we will look at different types of array.